It's Michael Lukies, and I'm joined here with Jean Clairville. Now, Jean, is there a place for poetry in business? And if so, how does it fit in? Uh, well, in my line of work with uh, actually motivational speaking, the thing is, all my success has actually came from poetry. I was just a guy that had a dream about actually um, sharing my poetry with the world. And when I decided to actually write my, uh, well, self publish my first book, uh, junior year in college, um, it's opened doors for me. Uh, I created a book full of poetry, and colleges would come to me and ask me to share my story. How did I do this with the obstacles that I faced? And then they started paying me to actually go to colleges and speak to um, students that, especially like freshmen, actually all 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 of the class, but especially freshmen that were coming in, they wanted me to speak to them, oh, how did you do it? Because we need people to actually guide them because a lot of people are in college and don't really know what they want to do and how did you find it and how can you help people find it. But even though right now it has led me to uh, inspirational speaking, poetry was the one that actually set the uh, foundation for me. So I believe poetry is in everything. It's just like when people label it poetry, it kind of gets shunned upon. Poetry is in, any, is in everything. It's in music. It's in your uh, Nikes just do it. The slogan is poetry. Um, everyone's brand is basically poetry in motion. So I believe that poetry is in business and it's created the business that I'm currently in. Without poetry, I wouldn't be here and a lot of businesses wouldn't be here because if they weren't able to effectively communicate um, what they're trying to uh, supply to their customer base, then they wouldn't be in business as well. So other than the action of using your poetry to write a book that people can read, uh, how do you use poetry and storytelling to impact others? Uh, I use poetry. Well, the gift that I have with poetry is that I'm able to uh, take someone's scenario, whatever they're going through, and put it and express it in words that um, can evoke emotion. Once I realized I had the gift, which was, uh, I'd say, around uh, I'd say 17 or 18 years old, whereas I wrote a poetry. I was a senior in high school, wrote a poem about the Virginia Tech shooting. Um, I was a senior in high school, so I knew people that were at Virginia Tech, and I knew people that were actually at my school who planned to go there. Now, poetry is like an escape for me, so I just simply wrote an, an inspirational poem to encourage people that were there to stay and people that wanted to go, you know, don't let this uh, deter you from going. And as I shared this poetry with, like, people in my school, they sent it to actual Virginia Tech. I showed it to my pastor, and he told me to actually um, – perform it in front of the congregation. Now, I've performed poetry many times before, but the moment that I had to perform this particular poem, I broke down and couldn't even get past the title. So I realized that all this time I was seeing how I could evoke emotion out of other people by seeing their uh, reactions in the audience. But for the first time, this poem actually affected me, the person who wrote it, which I wasn't really used to. So when that happened, I realized that poetry has an effect on people, but this was the first time it had an effect on me. And how I use poetry is that I basically take what my target audience can relate to, which is basically uh, high school and college students, how they want to go to school, but really want to discover what they want to do. So I take the poetry of the things that I've been through because I was in their seats not too long ago. So I use the poetry as basically the intimate thoughts that we all share, but the majority are afraid to actually express because they don't know how it's going to be accepted in society. So I just take poetry and basically say what they're thinking and relate, relate to them in a way that they can get it. Because one thing to say it to them, but they actually have to get what I'm saying. So that's how I actually use poetry into, story to, into storytelling. Because poetry and storytelling, I combine the two. I just use poetry as thoughts that I know that they have and they can relate to. And I tell them stories of the obstacles that I came, that I overcame, and how they can do the same thing as well. And how can entrepreneurs make a similar impact on employees and customers using storytelling and poetry? Well, when you think about it, people tell stories all the time. You had a long day, you call your spouse, you call whoever the case may be, and you tell them a story about how your day is. Everyone actually tells a story, but once they realize how they can effectively use storytelling to uh, get to their goal, um, that's where the transition can actually change someone's life, especially a business, because when it comes to actual employees, 
you actually have to realize what do they want. What what do you what do you and your business offer them that actually keeps them there? Because employees want to know what's in it for me and why should I work my tail off to help you and your business grow. So you really got to um, – the best way I see storytelling helping employees is basically finding out what does your team want? Like what is their end goal? Why do they work for you? Why do they work with you? What is their actual dream? And people people really don't care about – what you do or what your business do until they know that you actually care about them. So when it comes to storytelling, just taking the time out to realize the, to realize what your team wants, not the goal of the business, but what do, what do the leaders in your organization, what do they want? And you have to tell them stories of how uh, basically like the, the business mission and basically you as the CEO or the person up front, how, how have you overcome uh, obstacles? Uh, how did you get here? You have to tell them stories that they can relate to. So not only they care, but they're emotionally attached to the business and will do anything, well, not anything, but anything that um, they possibly can to actually help you. And when it comes to customers, like I said, when I brought up Nike and Just Do It, that's storytelling and that's poetry. They're using, they're telling a story and what their brand is. And that is basically uh, just make it happen. Just do it. Whatever goal you have, just do it. With Volvo, uh, they use it to... um, brand safety. So whenever you see a Volvo commercial, you see how they're branding safety and they're telling a story how you can buy this car. And by buying this car, I guarantee you that it's safe. May not be the most safest car on the marketplace, but I guarantee you that you will buy this because you think of your family and you think that if I get in this vehicle, I will be safer than I get in any other vehicle. So that's basically how I um, believe that storytelling is basically how you can tie it in, how it's already tied in. In business. And once again, this is Michael Luke. He's here with Gene Clairville. Now, inspiration can often fade and get lost in the daily shuffle. What are ways as a speaker and poet you can affect change on a greater level and make sure your audience doesn't forget your message an hour or so after hearing you speak? Uh, that, that, for most, that can be such, such a huge obstacle. But the way I go about it is that um, I don't just want to speak just to simply inspire because I can get in front of a stage and speak to thousands and get them pumped up. But my goal is after, after all of that, after all the energy is, is drained and after they go back home the week later, the month later, after they heard the speech, what can they actually take away from it? And the poetry that I share, I leave with them. The books that I create, I leave with them. The pens that I create, I leave with them because they need a reminder. We all need daily reminders. Uh, there was a quote, uh, I think Zig Ziglar said, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, motivation motivation doesn't last. Motivation are like showers. They don't last. You got to do them daily. Um, I kind of messed it up. I don't remember it verbatim. But basically I'm saying that to say that you need to be motivated daily. So I leave them with quotes. I leave them with I – cre- I strategically create products that they can leave with so they can be reminded daily – that, okay, this is what we spoke about, but these are action steps that you can take. Because whether it's a student who has an 18-credit course or a CEO who has a whole organization to run, they need inspiration that they can keep with themselves. So whether it's the pins that I have, the stickers, whatever the case may be, it will be a daily reminder that, you know what, this what Gene said stuck out to me and – my goal is to um, basically, because I remember uh, when I first started this, because I was a big fan of quotes, and I would see quotes in movies. I see them in YouTube videos. I see them everywhere. My my goal was simple. Before speaking, before all of this, when I became a poet, I wanted to create not only a poem, but just a line that people will use when I am gone, whether it's uh, whether it's so it can be used in movies, it can be used in commercials, but just an uh, inspirational line that people can use and that would, they will never forget. Because to me, that would be like me making a stamp on society, on the world, leaving my mark. And by doing that, I, I really, really, really wholeheartedly believe that that's how I keep people inspired. Because it's one thing to speak to them, but to actually leave them with something, whether it's a quote, a book, uh, not only blogs and things that I write, but something tangible that they could leave action steps, that they could be reminded daily 
something they could put on a vision board. I know by doing that, that they will stay inspired and stay connected with me as well. And what is that line? Uh, the most infamous line to date was, a person doesn't die when he or she reaches the grave. They die when their dreams do. And that actually came from a poem that I, from my first book called The Wealthiest Place on Earth. And in that poem, I'm simply describing how the wealthiest place on earth is the cemetery. Why? Because that's where people who didn't chase their dreams, their talents, their ideas, their abilities, all of that went to the grave with them. And I was at a place in my life where I knew that I, I felt stuck. I'm like, I have to realize what I'm here to do. Like, what am I here for? I woke up today, and I know it's not by chance because hundreds of thousands of people die every day, but I still got air in my lungs, and I, I was on a mission to find out why. And like I said, I'm a poet, so the only way I need to express myself is through poetry. So I'm writing a poetry, I'm writing a poem, and as I'm coming to the end of the poem, that's one of the last lines. And as soon as I wrote it, I was like, wow. I had like an aha moment, like, yo, did those words really come out of my mouth? And that quote has built the foundation for what I'm currently doing now because I marketed that simple quote to inspire college students, and then I put it on pin back buttons and was able to get those two celebrities who started wearing them and sharing them on social media. Then not only were they wearing the actual button that had the quote on it, people were buying the book. And then they decided to tweet it and put it on their website. Then Tony Robbins decided to tweet it along with other quotes and different celebrities that the youth would look up to. And then I knew I was putting a dent in the universe when Oprah decided to uh, retweet the quote herself. Once she did that, I was like, man, I'm a junior in college. I don't even think I need to finish. Just mail me my diploma. <laughs> Oprah tweeted my quote. I'm done. And then it also inspired me to keep on writing because not only she tweeted that quote, she retweeted another quote of mine saying, uh, most people don't have a clear picture of their dream because they let fear hold the camera. And I wrote, and that's not necessarily from a poem, but I was just writing my thoughts down and I realized that we think in pictures. And if I was to ask you, Michael, uh, what's the color of your phone? It is white, white phone. What's the color of your car? It is a silver car. See, when you see, when I ask you these questions, you see the picture of the thing <laughs> I'm asking you to describe instantly in your head. Why? Because we, we think in pictures. Now, if I was to ask you or ask the audience that I speak to or anybody, what, the day of you living your dream, what does that look like? When you close your eyes. What does that day look like? Where are you waking up? What are you having for breakfast? What car are you driving? Where are you located? What service are you rendering to society that actually makes you happy? And when you ask a lot of people that question, they don't have anything painted in their mind. Their imagination is a blank because fear holds them back. So when I came up with that, I'm like, people really need to realize that fear is the only thing that holds us back. But we got to realize, we got to paint the picture in our mind of what we want to do, and that will inspire us to actually go towards it. But once we're inspired, all we have to do is act towards it, and that's how it actually manifests into our reality. Great. So I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but leave us with some tips. What are, how can we help inspire other people similar to how you uh, strive to inspire others? Well, the way the thing that keeps me inspired, one, is that I seek inspiration in everything. The way that people can uh, inspire them – wait, the question was, how can people be inspired or how can people need tips to inspire? How can I inspire people on a daily basis? How would you recommend that, you know, someone – me, for example, go about inspiring people on a daily basis? The way you can go around uh, basically inspiring other people is actually, honestly – to just unwrap the gift that you have. We all have a gift. There's something that we were, there's something that everyone was born to do. And once you realize what that is, all you have to do is share it. You got to continue to write that story and you have to unwrap your gift. Whatever you're great at doing, you have to continue to do it. Whether it's writing, singing, blogging, uh, dancing, whatever it is, all you have to do is continue to do it because somebody out there needs to see it. Somebody has to see it. And you just have to continue to act and actually do it because the person that you may look up to, the person that may inspire you, the person that people may deem as a celebrity, they're 
deemed as a celebrity because what they do, they are actually getting notoriety from it. Your favorite singer is a singer because they continue to use their gift and sing. Your athlete is your favorite athlete because they continue to actually do the sport that they love. So find out what you love to do if you haven't already done so. And if you have, you really have to – the number one tip I would leave with you is the thing that will keep you inspired and keep you acting is to find out what your why is. Why are you doing this? And it has to be bigger than money. Why do you choose to do what you do? Because when the obstacles come in front of you, the first thing that's going to flash in your mind is, why am I doing it? The first question you're going to ask yourself is, why am I doing this? And if your why isn't big enough, you're going to quit. The majority of people quit. Same people quit. That has to be something a little off. You have to be damn near insane to actually continue to focus on this vision that you can see and no one else can understand. But if your why is big enough, you will be grounded and it will keep you and it will open doors for you where you thought there were only walls. But I would say focus on your why, write it down, and put it in numerous places where you can be reminded daily of it. My why is written in my pocket, it's on my fridge, it's on the bathroom mirror when I brush my teeth. So figure out what your why is if you haven't already and write it down in numerous places because we all need daily Reminders. We need to be reminded daily why we're doing what we're doing. So in order for you to stay inspired, the simple tip that I would leave is to write down your why and revisit it. Like why? Because you got to ask yourself why you're doing it. A lot of people want to ask you why you're doing what you're doing, but if your why isn't big enough, then you won't be motivated to continue. So focus on your why, write it down, keep it in numerous places to keep you inspired, and then everything else will just fall into place. The why, the how, and all that stuff, will fall into place. But if you focus on the why, the how will come to you when you least expect it. And this has been Michael Lucas with Gene Claverville. Now, Gene, let us know how we can get in contact with you. If somebody's interested in having you come speak at their event, how can they find out more about you and possibly book you as a speaker? Uh, they want to find out more about me and everything that I do. They can go to www.mrchanginglives.com. That is M R changinglives.com. On that website, I keep people uh, motivated uh, with um, my own personal material. I have videos of me speaking. And uh, if you want to book me, you can book me through there. So that's uh, mrchanginglives.com, mrchanginglives.com. On LinkedIn is my uh, name, Gene Clairville, uh, Twitter, Gene Clairville. But if you want to stay connected with me or want to learn more, uh, it's mrchanginglives.com. Gene, thanks again for your time, and, and keep going out there and spreading your message. I appreciate you, and I appreciate you for having me, and uh, hopefully this will inspire and spark the mind of somebody who actually changes the world and illuminates the light of anyone that surrounds them or come in contact with them. And once again, I appreciate you for having me.